Go Inside the Crimson Tide with your hosts Rodney Orr and Gary Harris, keeping you informed on everything Alabama. Tider Insider TV, brought to you by Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports. All right, good evening, everybody, and welcome into Tider Insider TV, brought to you by Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports. Alongside Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris, and it's game week. Game week has finally arrived, and by this time next week, Rod, we'll have some video to break down from Alabama and Miami. But just as much fun as a reaction to a game is, I think, is the anticipation and the predictions for the game. The opener now just four days away. Alabama and Miami kick off the season Saturday at 2.30 p.m. at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta. And we now have the depth chart. That's right, yesterday was depth chart Monday. Uh, here's some of the takeaways. Henry Toa Toa, uh, the inside linebacker transfer from Tennessee, will be the starter over Jalen Moody next to Christian Harris. Alabama's front seven has the potential to be one of the best in the SEC and probably all of college football. Justin Aboigby, J DJ J. Dale, Phil Mathis, Chris Allen, Toa Toa, Christian Harris, Will Anderson, and plenty of depth, too, for that group. At tight end, Cameron Latou listed as the starter. Jalil Billingsley, uh, you're going to see a lot of him. Major Tennyson, uh, they're bracketed as the backup at tight end. Wide receiver, Ohio State transfer Jamison Williams is the starter at the Z. And true freshman JoJo Earl is listed as the co-starter along with Slade Bolden at the H slot. John Mechie the third, of course, is the starter at the X receiver position. Offensive line in the middle. Two players listed, bracketed together at starting center, Chris Owens and Darian Dalcourt. Last week, Coach Nick Saban spoke about the need for consistency at that position. But no matter who goes out there, first against Miami, left tackle Evan Neal likes the look of this group up front. I know both of those guys are hardworking guys. They approach the game every day look, look, looking to get better. And I'm confident in whoever goes out there. I'm confident in both of those guys. I have a tremendous amount of respect for both of them. So, All right, let me bring Rodney in here in regards to the depth chart. A lot to talk about, Rod. Um, just a couple of your takeaways when it was first emailed out, I guess right around 11 o'clock yesterday. Uh, when you first looked at it, anything jump out at you? Well, I, I think really what kind of, caught my attention a little bit was in the past few years we've seen more and more freshmen mm -hmm. on that depth chart but we saw less this time I think you look at a lot of outstanding returning players the experience Alabama has on the defensive side and all of those things I was a little surprised I'm not, that Jojo Earl was listed as a co-starter mm -hmm. with with Slade Bolden at the at the slot position but also uh, as a punt returner I, I, I do think that JoJo can make a big contribution there. Obviously, Slade Bolden has some experience from last year. He's reliable, a guy that came within a whisker of breaking a couple of them so he can make plays as a punt return guy. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. Does Slade Bolden get a few, and then maybe JoJo Earl eventually gets his opportunity to return punts? We'll see. But, uh, again, I, I think my biggest takeaway, Gary, to be honest with you, when you talk about stacked, mm -hmm. I think it's a stacked depth chart. Really not many surprises on defense. It laid out pretty much the way we expected. I will say this, Jalen Armour Davis got pushed by freshman Kool-Aid McKinstry as well as, as Marcus Banks at that corner opposite Josh Joe. But the veteran, the fourth-year junior, Jalen Armour Davis, hangs in there and gets listed as the starter. Good for him. Yeah, Jalen Armour Davis overcoming an early career knee injury, injury that mm -hmm. looked like uh, you know, it's going to really hamper him. And you've, you've talked about it. You've mentioned it. We've mentioned it. That there was a speculation at one point he may even transfer out, yeah. hit the portal, but he stuck it out. He's done a really good job. So good for him. You mentioned the depth there. Ma Banks can play either side. Yeah. Uh, Karee Jackson's another good-looking yeah. corner that's come in this class uh, as a JUCO transfer. So got a lot of depth back there. And watch out for Brian Branch, too, at safety. Uh, he was listed co-starter with Malachi Moore at the star position. Uh, this guy with DeMarco Hellams possibly out. Brian Branch could get that call. Yeah, and real quickly, uh, Riker the kicker, we know that, but a spirited competition for the punting position. A lot of different guys, but James Burnup, the Aussie rugby-style and traditional-style putter who's never punted in a game, We'll punt yeah. Saturday against well, Miami. Let's hope we don't have to see him too often, yeah. but if we do, I think it will be really interesting because – you know, we've seen all the traditional punters here, but we've never really seen a running Aussie-style yeah. rugby kicker. So I think it, uh, I'm really interested to see him. Yeah, I've heard some good things about the guy that he can boom it. All right, now it's time for Coach Talk. Alabama's offense lost 
several key pieces from last year's national champion undefeated team, including Matt Jones, Devontae Smith, Najee Harris, Jalen Waddell, just to name a few. So how will the 2021 offense, and you know Nick Saban hates comparisons, but how will it stack up against the 2020 -0? Uh Here's Coach Nick Saban in tonight's Coach Talk. Uh, but I think the realistic approach is, is we had a lot of new players on offense. It's a work in progress to get all these players to develop, to be productive and consistent performers. Uh, we're working hard on that. The coaches are doing a good job of that. Uh, we've got new faces at a lot of positions, uh, which creates a lot of opportunity for people. Uh, how they manage it in the game, how they can take it to the game, how they prepare for the game, uh, those are all question marks that get answered when you play a game. All right, bring Rod back in here. Uh, let's just be honest, maybe Clemson, Ohio State, Oklahoma, but outside of that, and, and really Alabama kind of stands on its own, any other – program in the country that lost what Alabama lost last year from that offense? Mm -hmm. Eight guys currently on NFL rosters from that offense, including the Heisman Trophy winner, uh, top quarterback in college football, top running back in college football. You'd be saying, oh, my gosh, it's a rebuilding season. Defense is going to have to just kind of hold the fort until the offense can, can get going. But here, the expectation is that all these new guys are going to step in and pick up right where those guys left off. And, you know, Gary, again, I, I'd look at it more as a two-year deal when you look at two years ago, yep, look same, at all the same players thing. they mm -hmm. lost off the offense, and then now they lost the, this group again, which was a great group, obviously, and then, uh, you know, you just reload. Now, again, the inexperience, and we've talked about that for months. What's your concern? Uh, the inexperience on offense, the youth, I think all of those things, it takes time, and Coach Saban detailed that, but we've talked about it too. It takes time to develop that chemistry, mm -hmm. Gary, And but you look at the offensive line, and I think they have a chance to be really good. How quickly will they develop that cohesiveness? We'll see. But there's a lot of really good players up front, and, and I'm really excited to see those guys. There's Cameron Latou, number 81. He had a big spring as a tight end. But also Bryce Young getting his first start. Got a lot of talented receivers. That's JoJo Earl right there, number 10. Watch out for him on Saturday. He'll get his opportunities. And Brian Robinson, fifth-year yeah. senior running back from Hillcrest, is finally the starter. Yeah. Good for Brian. I mean, he's a guy that's, you know, waited his opportunity. You know, you look at him, he's a six foot one, 230 pound sledgehammer he's a that, that has, you know, better speed than a lot of people think. So uh, look forward to seeing Brian. They've got a talented running back group uh, Jace McClellan, Roy Dell Williams, Trey Sanders, all those guys. So, uh, again, a lot of youth, but a lot of talent. All right, let's talk Miami. This is a team ranked in the top 15 in the country that returns 19 starters. And I know everybody talks about North Carolina, how bad they got gassed, but that was a good football team last year. Again, this is part of being Alabama. A lot of other teams opening against Miami, you'd be thinking, man, we just want to go win the game. You know, maybe a point spread of three or four or five points. I'm talking about good teams. Alabama, 19-point favorite. <laughs> a lot of Bama fans are just saying it'll be over at halftime. Are we sleeping on this Miami team? Well, I think you always have to be cautious in that first game. You never really know. I mean, there's been some really competitive games. You could go back to 2009 when they opened in this same game against Virginia Tech. That was a really close game, Gary, mm -hmm. that Alabama took, took over late and won at 34-24 in a national championship year. This is a good team. Miami has a lot of veterans up front offensively. Uh, collectively, 190 starts That's on the That's a lot of experience. It's a lot of experience. You're talking about a great dual-threat quarterback. Now, he is coming off a major knee injury. Uh, we'll see how he responds to that, but very athletic, very dynamic player, De'Eric King. Uh, so, again, defensively, a lot of great players. You mentioned all those starters coming back. It's a challenge. Yeah, experience early in the season is a That's big right. advantage. Right. Miami's got a lot of it. All right, Rod, moving on. Alabama outside linebacker Quandarius Robinson was arrested um, early Sunday morning after he was involved in an automobile accident. The accident occurred at the corner of Hargrove Road in Prince Avenue, actually late on Saturday night, 11, 18 p.m. He's arrested early on Sunday morning for driving under the influence. Robinson is entering his second year for the Crimson Tide after registering last season out of Jackson Owen High School. Uh, there were three cars involved in the wreck, but nobody was injured. Robinson's bomb was set at $1,000 following the rest. Coach Nick Saban announced yesterday that he is suspended indefinitely and will go through the alcohol protocols that uh, – you know, they have for players when something like this happens. Hopefully he'll get himself back to where he needs to be. Well, still to come on Tider Insider TV, Saturday's game against Miami marks the end of an era for the Crimson Tide. Stick around. We'll explain when we come back. And also, former Crimson Tide quarterback Mac Jones shined in the preseason. But was it enough to win the starting job with the Patriots against former Auburn veteran Cam Newton? 
We'll have the answer next. And your phone calls, emails, and tweets. Go ahead and jot down the information. The phone number, as always, 205-348-WVUA. That's 348-9882. Or you can email us at the address on your screen or even tweet at us by using the hashtag TITV. We'll be right back with the only show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide and has been doing so since 2000. Tider Insider TV will return right after this break. Interesting factoid here, because that's what we do. We provide facts on TITV. The Chick-fil-A kickoff game for Alabama against Miami is the final scheduled neutral site game. Now, Bama has home-and-home -home series scheduled through 2035 against big-name programs like Ohio State, Notre Dame, Texas, Wisconsin, Florida State, West Virginia, and others. Now, these neutral site games from the time Nick Saban got here have been crucial in building the program, getting the profile to where it's at. Ronnie, they have been awesome, many of them in Atlanta. Others, of course, in, in Dallas and other locations around the country. But uh, they were a lot of fun. One more to go. But now with where we're at in college football, the fans want big home-and-home -home intersectional rivalries. I get it. And just like these games really propelled Alabama, now you like series against Texas, which start next year, will propel Alabama even further. But uh, there's a part of me that will miss these games. They've, I tell you what, they've been really good for Alabama football, particularly playing in yeah, Atlanta. They have. Yeah, certainly have. And go back to that 2008 game against Clemson when mm -hmm. – you know, Alabama, that really got this thing jump-started. Yeah, uh, sure did. That went over sure Clemson. Did. I saw Miller Forstall in that highlight there. Did he make a team? He got released today by the Titans. He didn't make the 53. Now, he could be signed to the practice squad or signed by another team, but he made it right up to the final cuts. And uh, I mentioned, of course, Dallas, uh, Atlanta, Orlando. Alabama played Louisville there a few years ago. Um, I'm looking forward to going to Atlanta one more time on Saturday for the game against Miami. Well, welcome back to TITV, sponsored by Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports. Alongside Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris. The NFL preseason is over, and the New England Patriots have decided the future is now. They have gone with Mac Jones, the rookie out of Alabama, over Cam Newton. This morning, in fact, the team released Newton, which means Mac's the starter. Now, he most likely won the coaching staff last week in New England's joint practices with the Giants while Cam Newton was out due to COVID, a misunderstanding of COVID protocols. Newton wasn't able to be there, and Mac just flat out shined. I mean... He did exactly what the coaches wanted him to do. He took care of the football. He moved the team. He threw it to the right guys. And uh, this is big, big, big news. Running, what makes it even, even bigger news is that Mac Jones will start for the Patriots against the Dolphins in the season opener. The Dolphins will be quarterbacked by Tua Tonga Bailoa. Jalen Hurts named the starter today for the Philadelphia Eagles. So you're looking at a situation where Alabama – a couple years ago, didn't have a single starting quarterback in the National Football League and had not had one in 40 years, yeah. and now you're going to have three. Yeah. pretty. And they all roll the same team. <laughs> pretty amazing the way things have changed, Gary. And, you know, you see now even in recruiting, the impact that it's mm -hmm. having on recruiting and Alabama recruiting these great quarterbacks. you got Bryce Young. You know, you brought in Jalen Milrow, a young player that's a freshman here now. you got Ty Simpson committed, who is a five-star player. Uh, you know, you've had other outstanding players that, that they brought in at the position. Paul Tyson, obviously, mm -hmm. was one locally that uh, – was highly recruited. So, again, I think the way things have changed with this offense and the way Nick Saban has evolved certainly makes Alabama very attractive to quarterbacks. What do you think? Of course, we know Bill Belichick was true to his word. He's going to do whatever he thinks is best for his football team, play the best guy. He doesn't care what anybody thinks. Were you a little surprised when you got the news that the Pats had released Cam and were going with Mac? Yeah, well, I wasn't necessarily surprised about the Mac news as much as I was just – you know, I wasn't really expecting Cam to get released. And uh, I, I really thought that probably, Gary, and, and this is a conservative way mm -hmm. of looking at it, that, that the Patriots would go with, with uh, Cam at least for a while mm -hmm. and, and kind of bring Mac along and, and slowly. But, uh, hey, listen, they made that decision. And Bill Belichick, uh, he, few can make it as well as he can. Mac versus two in week one. Guess who the Patriots play in week four? Yeah, Tom Brady. Tom Brady and the Bucks yeah, yeah. in Foxborough. Can yeah. you? I'm telling you something. That might be the highest. It's on Sunday night on NBC. That might be the highest rated NFL regular season game ever. I'm serious. Yeah. It'll be unbelievable, the hype. But I think Matt can handle it. Obviously, the Patriots think he can. All right, let's move on. Alabama soccer had two games this weekend, beating Lamar 3-1 to on Friday night, thanks to Katie or Kate Henderson's two goals, which helped lift the Crimson Tide over the Cardinals. And on Sunday, 
Home again against Southern Miss. The Tide would go on to win that one 3-2 to thanks to a goal from Felicia Knox with three minutes to go in the second overtime period. Alabama will be back in action on Thursday against the Sanford Bulldogs. In addition to Alabama soccer playing well over the weekend, so did Alabama volleyball. They got their season started in Huntington, West Virginia as part of the Marshall Invitational. The Tide went 3-0 and in the tournament, beating Austin P and Marshall each in four sets in Miami of Ohio in a three-set sweep. The Crimson Tide heads back to Tuscaloosa for the Crimson Tide Invitational, which starts on Thursday evening at Foster Auditorium. Well, still to come on Tider Insider TV, the Wishbone Boys, a documentary about Coach Bryant's wishbone offense in the 70s, premiered this past Saturday at the Bama Theater. Stick around for more information on the documentary. And next, we'll be welcoming your phone calls, emails, and tweets. You see the information right there on your screen. Interact with Tider Insider TV right now. Go ahead and give us a call, 205-348-9882. We'll be right back after this. This past Saturday night, the film The Wishbone Boys premiered at the historic Bama Theater in downtown Tuscaloosa. The documentary covers the implementation, implementation, uh, implement, I get it, implementation of the wishbone offense by Coach Bryant in 1971. The Alabama football team went on to win three national championships and 100 games in the 70s in the wishbone. Some great former players were there, like Richard Todd, Walter Lewis, Major Ogilvy, Gary and Jeff Rutledge, Billy Jackson. It goes on and on. Wayne Wheeler, I was involved and, and was honored to be one of the interviewers on the red carpet. It was a great, great night. And this wishbone boys, go to wishbone boys film and uh, check it out and, and get it because it's going to be Great. We saw a 48-minute version, Rodney, but the entire film is like 88 minutes. Wow. And I guarantee you it's riveting, particularly for guys like us that yeah. were live during the yeah. 70s and saw it up close and personal. Unbelievable. All right, let's jump out on the Tider Insider Hotline. Let's work. Uh, welcome in Rick from over at Regents Forest. Hey, Rick. Hey, fellas. Appreciate you taking my call. I'd like to ask uh, about, uh, it seems like uh, years up before last year, we had several debilitating injuries and just eaten up by smaller ones and everything. I'd like to ask your opinion of the training crews that came in new last year and the job that they have done. And I appreciate you taking my call. Thanks. Oh, absolutely, Rick. Always a pleasure to hear from you. I'll start, Rod. I, I, I never wanted to spare Scott Cochran. He did an amazing job here for a lot of years as the strength and conditioning coach and that staff. But I do think Coach Saban was – looking to take it in a, in a different direction, away from so much heavy lifting and toward a more analytical and scientific approach. So it was perfect timing to bring in David Ballou and Dr. Matt Ray from, Rhea from uh, Indiana and an entirely you know new staff for the most part. A lot of guys are still here because it's a huge strength and conditioning program. But, yeah, I, I think the results have been unbelievable. And as good as Alabama is, I do think that Ballou and Matt Rhea have made them even better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no question about it. I mean, when you look at them physically, uh, there's no question the uh, progress that this, you know, that they've made. But, but also, Gary, you talk about the injuries. Rick mentioned that, the soft tissue injuries. Mm -hmm. I think that was the least amount of, of, of those soft tissue injuries that they had was last year in, in several years. Uh, now, they've had a few injuries this year. Uh, on the offensive line, some of those like sprained ankles. Mm -hmm. Of course, DeMarco Hellams, the safety, has a sprained ankle. But, yeah, I mean, for the most part, Rick, injuries have been, uh, you know, things have certainly looked better than they did in some of those seasons where, hey, you remember it almost wiped out Alabama's linebacker court in 2017. Sure uh, so, uh, yeah, I feel really good about that. Thanks for that phone call, Rick. When we come back, more phone calls and emails. You stay tuned. TITV will be back right after this. Welcome back to TITV with Rodney Orr. I'm Gary Harris. Let's get right back out on the phone lines because we're starting to get short on time. And Reg is over in Birmingham. Hey, Reg. Question I had, and then I want to make a statement. Okay. Could you guys tell me whatever happened to the tower that Coach Bryant had on the football field and also the uh, film that you mentioned? Can we buy that in a DVD? Now I make the statement. You know, after we got beat by Clemson pretty bad in that bowl game we played, a lot of people say, especially my buddies up in Tennessee, said this will be it for Coach Saban. He'll get he'll get out now. And how much has he done since that game? Yeah. Go ahead. Oh yeah, he's he's proven people wrong a few times. As far as the tower, I don't know where it's at now. I know they've got it. I mean, it was taken down with. Coach Perkins, and I think it might have been put back up at one time. It, it was uh, put back up. Now, yeah. I don't know where it is. Yeah, I'm sure it, it's somewhere. Yeah, uh, Wishbone Boys Film. Just uh, Google Wishbone Boys Film, Reg, and you can find the website where you can get the movie. Uh, what was the question? Did you, 
Uh, I'm not even really sure. Okay. What well, that was the question. He had the statement about, yeah, the Clemson game. He, he, you're right. Uh, Alabama's bounced back with Nick Saban numerous times. All right, let's get to a, a tweet real quickly before we close out the segment. When is the last time Bama had three starting quarterbacks in the NFL from Go Line Stand on Twitter? Rodney, I was thinking about this. I didn't look it up, but I know, of course, at one time there was Star, there was there was uh, Joe Namath, later Scott Hunter, and, and, and but I think in 1977, I think on opening day 1977, I'll need to check this, I think Scott Hunter started for the Falcons, Joe Namath for the Rams, Kenny Stabler for the Raiders, and Richard Todd for the Jets. Mm -hmm. So that would have been, I think, the last time. But now uh, that was four, but now they've got three. All right, we're going to come back. Thanks for the phone calls, the emails, and the tweets. We'll be back to wrap it up on an overcast night, but it's looking better outside. We'll be back after this. Game week, Roddy, means it's prediction time. Our first of the season, you take it away. Well, uh, you know, Gary, these, these first picks, they're always difficult. But, uh, you know, I, I, I look at this game and I say, who's the best team on paper? That's, that's really what I'm, I'm looking at. And I think, obviously, Alabama's recruited extremely well, got a lot of great players. I know there's a lot of inexperience on the offensive side. But that defense, I think it's really going to be good. Uh, look, Miami's going to be a challenge, but – Gary, I've got it 38-17. You know, again, we never talk about our picks in advance. Uh, Alabama's going to win the game. I, I agree wholeheartedly. I don't think this is going to be as big a blowout as some. i got a lot of respect for what Manny Diaz is building there in Miami. Like I said, experience early in the season counts for a lot. I think Alabama wins the game, but I've got it 35-17. So we're kind of on the same page. I think this game could be competitive into the second half, and I think UA wins comfortably, but not the blow. Now, listen. I've been wrong before, and it might be, you know, 31 nothing at half. But I think Miami's got enough to hang around for a while. All right, we'll find out for sure on Saturday afternoon. I'll be in Atlanta. I'll be live there for Crimson Tide kickoff at 11 a.m. And, again, have a post-game recap for you that night on the news at 10. Thanks for tuning in to Tider Insider presented by Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports. Don't forget, if you missed any of tonight's show, you can catch the replay tonight at 1030 after the news at 10 or online anytime at WVUA23.com. We leave you with video of Alabama football practice from earlier this afternoon. For Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris. Thanks for watching. Good night, everybody. Roll Tide.